taste tests. Taste test is where we evaluate the taste of a food product, whether on its own or compared with other products. Some taste tests will be conducted blind, while others will focus on a particular brand or item. This week, we're going to make an easy but delicious Asian-inspired sardine sandwich and a Japanese cucumber salad. Later, we'll taste test some wines and charcuterie that you might take on an overland trip. First, our Asian-inspired sardines. I chose this sandwich to show what's possible with pantry goods that you can store in your dry box when you're on an overland journey. Our main ingredients, sardines, are abundant in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Mediterranean seas. They feed on plankton only, which means they don't contain the high levels of mercury that other fish do. Sardines aren't a popular fish in the United States, but after you take a look at their nutritional benefits, you might want to consider them. These small fish are packed with nutrients that can be beneficial in the prevention of a number of health conditions. Some of these nutrients are known to help prevent heart disease or may protect against certain cancers. Sardines are an excellent source of omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin B, vitamin D, Sardines are an excellent source of calcium, which makes them a good choice if you're lactose intolerant, allergic to dairy, or need more calcium in your diet. If that's not enough, sardines contain the following minerals. Niacin, iron, potassium, magnesium, zinc, phosphorus. Sardines also have protein, which is essential for you to build healthy bones and muscles. Another thing about protein it helps create antibodies that keep our immune system strong. While sardines can be enjoyed fresh, they're highly perishable. That's why most commonly they're found canned. With that, let's get started on our sandwich. Okay, here we go. Uh, these are the ingredients. It's very simple. Cucumber, red onion, chili garlic sauce, some toast, and sardines. So let's get this going. The first thing is what we're going to do with the bread. So with the, with the bread, you can do it as is, but typically for this type of sandwich, we cut off of the ends. So we're going to cut off the ends, which is very easy to do. Anybody can do that. This is a sandwich that anybody can do, and I chose it because it's something that you can keep in your dry box, and you can make it like that, and it's delicious. So we've got our bread, right? And now we have our bread, and we're going to open up these. Um, well, before we do that. We're going to set this to the side, and we're going to deal with this cucumber. Now, what we do first is we peel a little bit off like that. And you don't want to go in deep. You just want to get a, enough off to leave that white like what you see there. And four sides is good. This one... Uh, uh, so now, once you do it like that, we're going to cut very thin slices. And I mean thin. The thinner you cut them, the better. Now, I know I'm not doing a good job at this second. And that's because I'm so, it's so important to have thin that I'm focusing on that. And I don't mind messing up a few to get the thin. And I can even use some of the, the broken ones. It won't matter. Now, the reason why we want them thin is because this is about flavors and textures. And with this particular dish, um, textures has a lot to do with flavors. If you cut these thicker, you may like them that way, but it's going to have a different uh, flavor than if you cut it thin. The same with the onions. Uh, another version of this that I, I make, 
I use uh, white or yellow onions, and I cut them thick and chunky. And the thick and chunky has a lot to do with the, with the flavor and with the texture, the way it crunches when you bite into it. So it's going to taste good no matter what. But ultimately what's going to happen is after you've made a couple of these, you're going to decide what thickness or thinness. But traditionally you want this thin, especially if you're doing it Asian style like we're doing. And speaking of that, this is Asian inspired, but you can use hot sauce, you can use Tabasco, you can use salsa, sofrito, mustard, all, all types of things. Uh, there's more than one people that make sa uh, sardine sandwiches. So you can go in many different directions with this, but we're, we're going Asian style today. So give me a second. I'll be right back. I want to drain these sardines. All right, so we have our sardines. They look delicious. We've drained them a little bit. I left a little oil in there, and we're going to add them to our bread. I'm going to go one by one and just line them up. There's nothing special that needs to be done. Just line them up. If you want a bunch of them, you put a bunch. If you want just a few, you put just a few. And for me, that's enough for me. Okay. Now we're going to take our thin, paper thin cucumbers and put those next. We're going to thinly slice some red onion. I don't need very much of that, but you put as much as you like. That should be enough. And how you lay them out, too, has a lot to do with the texture. That's a, enough onions for me. Now, my wife at this point, she likes to put mustard on them. And I do too, but we're keeping this Asian inspired. So we're not doing that today. We're using uh, garlic, uh, chili garlic sauce. I'm going to add a little bit of that. And when I say a little, a little, because it's, you don't want it to be the, the main flavor component. You just want it to, to add Add just a little bit of spice. Let's see. That might not be enough for most people, but I mean for some people, but for most people that's going to be perfect. And then we crown it with our bread. And ladies and gentlemen, and... You know I ain't about to make this and not at least take one bite. And we're going to make so much stuff today that uh, I'm only going to take a couple of bites and then I'm moving on. It's delicious. I like canned fish of all kinds. So this is right up my alley. You can keep cans, cans of these in your dry box forever almost, you know, at least for a full season, a whole year, you can keep them in your dry box and, and they're there. You can either eat them out of the can, which I like to do, or you can make something like this. Now, what's next? is we're going to make a cucumber salad. So we're going to clean this up, and I'll be right back. 
All right, our next dish is the Japanese cucumber salad, or in Japanese, sunomono. This is something you may have eaten before, but had no idea how to make. It's a popular salad at Japanese restaurants, and it's simple to make. Here are the ingredients with some options. You need a cucumber, toasted white sesame seeds, rice vinegar, table sugar, kosher sea salt, and soy sauce. Now, there's variations with this next ingredient. You can use canned tiny shrimp, canned crab meat, canned anchovies, imitation crab meat, caviar, two ounces boiled octopus, or any kind of seafood that you think would go with it. First, we're going to make the seasoning. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, in a bowl... And when I say a bowl, it's really more like a plate. We're going to put the ingredients together. All right, to make the seasoning, we're going to start out with four tablespoons of rice vinegar. I rarely measure, but I'm giving you measurements to start. And what will happen is you'll make adjustments to taste as time goes on. The next thing is you want to have two tablespoons of granulated sugar. Now, the sugar that I'm using, this particular sugar is an organic raw sugar. Uh, my wife buys it, so that's what I use. <laughs> okay, we've got our granulated sugar. And the next thing we need is a half a taste, teaspoon of uh, kosher salt. And I'm using sea salt. Now, don't focus too much on what salt you use. Just, just use the salt that you normally use. I normally go back and forth between sea salt and uh, kosher salt. That's what I had today, so that's what I used. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a tablespoon of soy sauce and I'm going to kind of eyeball it I'm used to making this and once you've added the, the rice vinegar again the granulated sugar the kosher salt and the soy sauce just whisk it real well and it's a nice dark brown it's gonna go well on the on the salad Okay, so if the vinegar taste is too strong, you can dilute it with a little small amount of water. Now, the main component of this salad, again, is thin sliced cucumbers. And they're going to taste completely different than what we have become accustomed to because... The sauce and whatever variation you decide to add to it gives it just a completely different flavor. And I try to make mine paper thin because I like the, the sauce to get right into the cucumber. So, nope, I want a few more because I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to eat it, and I'm going to enjoy it. Okay, now we're going to combine this. I'm going to grab a plate. And we're going to take our... I think I need some more cucumbers. Now this is something that I, I snack on at home all the time. I'll make it on the trail. It's a very versatile, refreshing thing to eat. It's easy to make. It's quick to make. It's taking me longer to make it, explaining it, than if I just went on ahead and just 
you know, put it together. Okay. So we have the uh, cucumbers and laid out. And we're going to take our sauce. And you don't overdo it. I made all that sauce, and all I'm going to do is drip a little bit over it, a little bit at a time. But you don't want them drenched. You don't want to overdo it. So now we have it, we have our cucumbers coated with the with the sauce, and the next thing is you can, like I said, you can add things like um, crab meat, shrimp, caviar, uh, imitation crab meat, mussels, practically any kind of seafood, especially light and uh, flaky and white fishes, will all go good on this. Um, we're going to go with caviar this time and see how that goes. And you want to make sure that you don't crush the eggs or find something. Um, at home, I use a pearl spoon, but I wasn't going to take that out the house and lose it. Um, so anyway, we're going to add the eggs. I love this particular version with the I don't do this one very often because it's it's salty. I have to have uh I have to want a salty flavor because the caviar really makes it salty. That's actually a lot. So you could you could put like half of that amount and you'd be doing fine. Okay, so it's time to try this. Trust me, guys. This is really, really simple to make. Try it. You don't, if you don't like caviar, use some of the other things. But make this. And it's healthy. It's a light and it's delicious. Mm, 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 mm. Yummy in my tummy. Now, if I had used the crab meat or the shrimp, I would have added a little more salt to it, but you don't need it with the caviar. This is black caviar, if that's what you're wondering. And I'm in heaven right now. I know I should have cut up more cucumbers, but we're not finished eating yet. So... I'll make up for it on the next thing I eat. But I really wish I had made maybe twice as much of this. Again, I, I don't want to stress it. I want to stress it as much as possible to you. This is, this is a keeper. This is the one you need to do. This is an easy one. And if you take the time to cut the cucumbers nicely and just layer them around and display them nicely, people will be impressed and you didn't really do nothing. So I want to move on. We're going to taste test some wines. And we're also going to taste uh, different charcuteries that you can have in your dry box that uh, either are non-perishable or will last a long time. At least they'll make it through your trip um, with uh, no refrigeration. So let's get right to that. All right, so now we're back. We've got a couple of wines with us. We've got a bunch of charcuterie. Here we've got the 14 Hands Hot to Trot Smooth Red Blend. And we have the Barefoot Sweet Red Blend California Smooth Sweet Red Wine. Now, I chose these. I got them on Amazon. We get our... our um, Groceries delivered to us on Amazon.com. And these were the cheapest five-star rated red wines that they had, by a large margin, as a matter of fact. Uh, this one, I believe, was like $6.99. And this one was 
eight ninety nine, something like that. So they're cheap wines, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna test them out today. And not only are we going to test them out, like I said earlier, we're going to cover some of these um, items that I have here that you could easily take with you on an overland trip, and they would be delicious, as we're going to find out. So first, we're going to start by opening these wines up. Now, I chose red wines because that's what I drink. I drink uh, red wines. So I'm not really a drinker. And this is one that I'm comfortable drinking every day. And I'm at an age now where they say it's good for me to be drinking wine. So that's what I do. This first one that we've got here, we're starting with the Sweet Red Blend from California. Okay. And the second one we have here, we're going to let that one get some air to it. The second one that we have here is uh, 14 Hands Hot to Trot. Well, out of the two, I like the bottle better. It looks better. It's a prettier bottle. But that doesn't mean a thing. It could turn out to be the worst. So after I open this particular bottle, then I'm going to explain what's, what's going on here on the table. And by that time, our wines should have... Our wines should have gotten some air. They've breathed. They, I've let them breathe, and we'll get a full body taste from the wine. I know y'all all know all that. I'm just trying to sound good. And we have another glass here. This is your glass. Okay, I'm going to put these bottles out of the way for a second. And now we're going to take a look at our plate here. All right, so here's our table. Up at the top, that white creamy stuff, that is called Borson Shallow and Chives. It's a gourmet cheese. Next to it, we have Dietz and Watson uh, truffle salami medallions. So salami with truffles in it. Then next to it, we have Cento anchovies. And next to it, we have the Black Caviar, some cheap brand. I don't know the name. And we have some more of the Patagonia mussels that I love so much. And spread all around are wheat crackers. All right, so now that we know what's up here, it's time for us to dig in. Uh, the first thing I want to try are these uh, medallions of salami with truffle in them. And I'm picking them first because these are the only things up here that I've never had before. And I thought it was interesting. Truffles. I don't really taste truffles, and I don't like this. I could see someone liking this, but that's not my cup of tea right there. So this is a good time for us to try our first wine, which is the Sweet Red Blend. Smells good. Smells like wine. Now, I'm not going to give you all those, those uh, 
fancy critiques telling you about the tannins and the the oak scents and all of that kind of craziness. I'm just going to tell you how it tastes to me and whether I like it or not. It tastes nothing like what I thought it was going to taste like. Um, I could pick this this wine. If I had 10 red wines in front of me and I tasted them all, I, I could pick this out immediately. It has a very distinct taste. Um, it's smooth. It's a sweet wine. has a nice aroma. It tastes like a lot of cherries and a lot of plums were in this wine. Um, flavors of black cherry and plum. Um, this is a winner. This is a winner. And if you if you haven't learned yet, I taste something and it's either a winner or it's not right off the bat. It's not going to grow on me. So let me finish my wine. And hey, if you got something to drink over there, you guys drink up too. Because I'm going to be enjoying myself. You might as well also. All right. Next thing we're going to try are some of these anchovies. Now, when I've said I've had these before, I haven't had Cinto before. But it was more popular on Amazon than the ones that I normally get, which are uh, Little Oscars. They're good. I like my, my Oscars better. I can taste the difference, but these are good. I would absolutely buy these again. They were half the price, so there's that. And with that, now we're going to try 14 hands hot to try. This smells better than that one. This is the one I would drink at home or wherever. This is one I would I would I would purchase it for myself. But if I was visiting someone and I was bringing them a bottle of wine, this is the one I would bring them. And here's why. This has a very distinct taste and I can see someone not liking it. And this one, if you like red wines, it's a very standard, it's a real straightforward flavor. Um, it doesn't stand out. It doesn't taste bad. It's a good tasting wine, uh, especially considering its price. I could see this being somebody's everyday day wine that they drink all the time uh, and being 110% satisfied with it. But me being not a drinker, um, when I do drink, I want to really enjoy it. This has less of an alcohol flavor taste to it. Kind of reminds me of of of, of a um, of a Syrah wine, kinda mixed with a sangria. If that makes any kind of sense, I could actually see myself using this as a base to make a sangria to try and give you an idea of the taste. Uh, very unusual, but delicious. Yep. This is also, th this is one I would give someone um, if they told me, I'm not really a wine drinker. I'd be like, okay, drink that. 
Because of the two, if you're not, if you if you uh, don't like wine, you don't want to drink alcohol, you don't like alcohol flavor and taste, that's the one to go with. Okay, the next thing, this, now this is one of my favorite things. I eat this a lot. Uh, many people who know me, who have seen me on the trail, have seen me pull this out and eat this uh, when we pull over. This is always a, a delicious quick snack. And it's the gourmet cheese. It has uh, chives and onions in it. I also sometimes use it in a pinch on my bagels. I like to have uh, bagels and lox, bagels and smoked salmon with capers and red onions, and with cream cheese. And if I don't have cream cheese, I usually have some of that in my fridge when I'm on the road because I, I usually... I leave the house with like three of them in my fridge because um, sometimes I can't find them. But these are delicious. Something else I do with these, I'll take some preserved jalapenos, you know, the ones that come in the jar and are already cut up. They've been marinating in, in oil. I'll chop them, chop them up real, like, almost like minced. And I'll whip it up in, in here. And I'll take a little bit of tuna. And I'll break it up and I'll mix it up in there. It might be an actual dish that I don't know the name of. And I didn't actually invent it. But I think that I invented that. but um, And it tastes good. This chopped up with a little red onion and a little jalapeno and a little tuna. Or you can use mackerel. Eating my caviar. And another thing that I like, I showed you these a few weeks ago. Um, I'm eating some mussels from Patagonia, Patagonia Provisions, which is a part of Patagonia. It's their food food section. And even though this is my favorite thing and I talked about their food the other week, what I didn't tell you was is I only showed you like a very small portion of all the different kind of foods and seeds and they've got all kind of stuff. So go over there and check it out. If you didn't like what you saw, there's something over there delicious for you to eat. Okay, so this is where we're at with the wines. If this is the only, if I had only brought that one and this was going to be just this and this wine, I'd be totally fine. I'd drink it up. I'd go right through the bottle. But this one is so just delicious. It's just tasty, which I don't ever think of the words delicious or tasty when I think of alcohol. This one is delicious. So I've tried everything. We did the Asian sardines. We did the cucumbers, cucumber salad. We've tried all of these. I hope this is giving you some kind of ideas of some things that you can do on the trail other than grilling a steak all the time or making a ham sandwich, or, you know, the, the, cooking a hot dog. And, and I love those things. But... They can get repetitive and very boring. So I'm just trying to give you a, a different perspective. Now, next time we do a taste test, no more of this stuff. We're, we're, we're going to get into some cooking, and we're going to leave this alone for a little while, the canned goods and um, the dehydrated meals and all of that stuff. We may come back to them, but 
we're going to go in a completely different direction. I also have a segment coming up that I'm working on with someone uh, where he's going to show you how to make inexpensive meals on the road. So I'm just kind of rambling now. Um, the show is over. I want to thank you for stopping by. I hope you come back again. I hope you like, subscribe. If you do subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a show. Uh, please share the show. The show is going to get better. There's more, more segments that I still haven't gotten to. I've got a ton of interviews that I still haven't shown yet. Um, everything's looking positive. Uh, I'm very shocked. Uh, subscribers are growing at a, at a rate faster than I thought because I really didn't even think about it. And if you had asked me, I, I, I didn't think it would be doing as well as it is. So I'm thankful for all the new subscribers that I've gotten. And with that, I want to say everyone stay safe, tread lightly, and hopefully I'll see you here on the trail soon.